can you can go there, and uh, I'll just uh, okay, I'll change the slides. Only yeah. there will be an assistance. Of you. Hello, dear colleagues. Today I want to represent you my clinical case of renal cell carcinoma. So I'm really glad to see you here. So let's start it. So next slide. Uh, first, I want to say some words about renal cell carcinoma. Uh, you can also know it as a renal adenocarcinoma, Gravitz tumor, or hypernephroma. So it's a primary malignant uh, adenocarcinoma derived from the renal tubular epithelium and the most common neoplasm of the kidney, which takes about 90-95% of uh, all renal tumors. So what's about incidence? Uh, you can note that uh, patients are typically about 50-70 years uh, of age at presentation. There is a male predilection of 2 by 1 and uh, every year about 30,000 new cases are diagnosed in the US. Uh, it takes about 8% of all added malignancies and it, the sixth leading cause of cancer deaths. So, uh, and also 80-90% of primary malignant adult renal neoplasm. Please the next slide. Uh, so, what's about risk factors? Risk factors include obesity, cigarette smoking, dialysis related cystic disease, treatment with uh, cyclophosphamide and heavy analgesic use. So, uh, no, no, no. <coughs> yeah. some, there are some diseases which are associated with renal cell carcinoma, such as uh, tuberosis, sclerosis, and foreign hyperlindal disease. So, next. Yeah. yeah. So, some words about histology. So, there are two main uh, subtypes of renal cell carcinoma. Uh, I, I want to start with the clear cell carcinoma. It's the most spread it. It takes about 70-80% and it arises, arises from proximal convoluted tubulars. Uh, it has uh, large uniform cells with clear cytoplasm and it is really highly vasculated, as you can see. So the second type is a papillary renal cell carcinoma, which takes about 13-20% and it arises from distal Convoluted tubulars uh, can be multifocal or bilateral and uh, is the mostly common form of dialysis associated renal cell carcinoma. So the third one is a homophobic renal cell carcinoma which takes about 5% and it arises from uh, intercalated cells of collecting ducts and uh, uh, it's very similar to renal uh, oncocytomas and it has a best prognosis of all of these types. So, and the last one is the collecting duct renal cell carcinoma. It takes less than one percent, and uh, you can usually see it at younger patients, and it has the worst prognosis among them. So, for the next slide. So, uh, what's about clinical presentations? Uh, because of often a non-specific clinical manifestation, renal cell carcinoma is usually uh, referred to as uh, the great imitator by clinicians. Uh, presentation uh, classically describes as a triad of macroscopic hematuria, palpable flank mass and flank pain. So, uh, around 25% of renal cell, renal cell carcinoma patients uh, uh, will develop uh, paraneoplastic syndrome, uh, which includes hypercalcemia, hypertension, uh, Staffer syndrome, hepatic dysfunction not related to metastasis. Sometimes it's uh, feminization and uh, sometimes it, it is uh, limbic encephalitis. The next slide, please. So, uh, I want you to take a look at the TNM classifications, which is usually used by uh, pathologists. Uh, the next one. And this is the Robson renal cell carcinoma classification, which uh, uh, is mostly used by radiologists. So there are four types of this. And uh, uh, what's interesting about this classification that it's used for staging. So the next slide, please. So uh, staging is incredibly important because of both treatment and prognosis, uh, because uh, uh, it really depends, uh, our tactic is really depends on the staging. So, the next slide, please. Ah, some 
terms about imaging modalities. I'm going to start with the uh, ultrasound because it's a uh, very frequent request to access the renal tract and it's not sensitive or specific as CD or MRI. Uh, renal cell carcinoma has a widely varying sonographic appearance. It may appear as uh, solid or particular cystic mass. Uh, it may be hyper dense, either dense or hyper dense uh, to surrounding, surrounding renal parenchyma and the uh, tumor pseudocalculus is usually visualized, visualized as a <coughs> hyperhagenic halo. So, uh, the next uh, uh, is the intravenous urography, but it's not uh, used really often now. And uh, imaging should be performed after using a bolus administration of contrast, about <coughs> 100 milliliters. And uh, we can make some <coughs> films after 1, 5, 10, and 15 minutes. Uh, renal cell carcinoma is typically uh, expensive and appears as a focal bulge extension uh, from the kidney, displacing normal renal structures. So, CT is uh, frequently used to both diagnosis and stages, uh, renal cell carcinoma, and uh, of course, it's uh, method of choice. So, uh, doing the contrast enhanced CT, we always see the non contrastic phase. Uh, there are some specific features. Uh, lesions appear of soft tissue attenuation. Larger lesions can uh, have areas of necrosis, and uh, approximately 30% uh, of cases demonstrate some calcifications. So the next phase which we are interested in is the uh, cortical medulla phase. It may, it, it, it's about uh, 25 or 70 seconds after administration of contrast and it demonstrates as variable enhance, enhancement. Uh, it's usually less than a normal cortex and small lesions may enhance in a similar amount and be difficult to detect and the clear cell subtype may show much stronger enhancement. Uh, cortical medullary phase is the best for assessing vascular anatomy and uh, both for renal vein involvement and for arterial variation if particle nephrect uh, nephrectomy is being uh, contemplated. Uh, the nephrogenic uh, phase uh, which is uh, 80, from 80 to 100 seconds after administration of contrast uh, is the most sensitive phase for detection of abnormal contrast enhancement and the last phase is extratory phase which is important for assessing the collected system anatomy. So follow up imaging with CT is always done with the dual phase uh, imaging of the abdomen to maximize their detection of solid organ metastasis. Uh, Next uh, is MRI, and uh, actually MRI is not only excellent uh, at imaging the kidney and local staging tumors, but is also suggested likely histology on the grounds of T2 differences. MRI is usually useful for imaging renal vein and uh, inferior vein cover tumors, uh, tumor thrombus and the uh, rostral extension. So the next slide, please. Uh, some words about uh, different differential diagnosis. Uh, so the broad differential is essentially that of all renal masses, particularly other renal tumors, and mostly commonly includes the renal tumors, uh, such as renal adenoma, renal alpha renal uh, lymphoma, e multi and multilocal cystic nephroma. Uh, renal Pseudotumors, tumors, which are hemorrhagic or complex renal cyst, uh, renal abscess, renal infarct, or hypertrophic com column of bedding. So, and the direct extension of uh, neighboring tumors. Transitional cell carcinoma of the pelvis, adrenal tumors, or retroperitoneal tumors. Uh, uh, as the renal cell carcinoma has proven resistant to all the forms of chemotherapy, the mainstay of the therapy is surgery. So radical surgery is a procedure of choice. So the next slide. Uh, 
Prognosis can be very well depending both on histological subtype and stage. Uh, the papillary variant carries the best prognosis, uh, five years survival about 90% and the, uh, followed by clear cell renal carcinoma, uh, it's about five years survival about 70% uh, while collecting duct subtype carry the worst prognosis. So the next slide. So wh what's definitely about the clinical case, the patient chair, female, five, 59 years old, was admitted to urology department with complaints on plant pain. So pre we have some previous ultrasound findings such as neoplasm in left kidney. Uh, the patient was sent to Moniki Hospital to verify and follow up CT scan of abdomen and retroperitoneal space with intravenous contrast enhancement was made. Uh, the next slide. So what we have find, found there. Uh, the right kidney. Uh, uh, the right kidney was located a little bit lower than usually and uh, we have found the solid heterogeneously enhanced right renal sharply imaginating mass with smooth roundy, rounded contours uh, and the mass shows uh, strong enhancement during the arterial phase and then appears to be low dense during the nephrogenic phase. Uh, there is no features of extension and uh, kidney margins are smooth, non-deformed and paranephron is not changed. Uh, what is about left kidney? Uh, it's typically located and has smooth, non-deformed margins. Uh, kidney pelvis of normal size, no concrements, and the examinations uh, reveals two cysts in upper lobe of left kidney and three parapelical cysts in the uh, lobe uh, in the uh, lower lobe. So lymph nodes in the peritoneal space are not enlarged. So the next slide. So here you can see films. It's a native face. You can see the tumor in the right kidney. Uh, as I said, it's uh, uh, round shaped. It looks like solid. Uh, So, what's about arterial phase? We can see that it uh, really, it's really enhanced uh, by the contrast, and uh, the enhancement uh, is not heterogeneous. Uh, so, that let us uh, say that it could be a clear cell carcinoma. The next, please. And uh, in the nephrogenic phase, you can see that this tumor is low dense. Uh, so, the next. Uh, what is impression? It's a typical appearance of right-sided renal cell carcinoma, uh, probably a clear cell carcinoma. We can say definitely only after pathological uh, examination and resection of right kidney is recommended. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alina. Uh -huh. that, was, uh, <laughs> that was very interesting. Brilliant, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, uh, full, full of information, and uh, uh, I, I think uh, did everybody understood the uh, uh, arterial phase, the electronic phase, and the native phase of. of uh, Probably uh, people will ask yeah. what yes. they did not understand yeah. or what Any they questions? would like yeah. the speaker to clarify. Right. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I want to clarify one thing. Uh, you said that there is no effective chemo chemotherapy for uh, carcinoma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what uh, can you say about sorofinibum? I, uh, I was um, uh, in some meeting uh, of, of, of urologists and mm -hmm. they said that there, there are many uh, effective drugs uh, like target for this particular for this pathology. particular for yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't have such an information. But uh, as I read, it was about uh, 2014 years uh, of journal of 2014, and there were no information on this. Sorry. Can, can I try? Can I try to answer? Maybe I didn't understand. But uh, normally, uh, for uh, such kind of uh, tumors that uh, Alina was talking about. Uh, the chemotherapy is not indicated. It is always uh, used surgery, and it depends on uh, the type of. It, it depends on the size of tumor, 
and it depends on where it is located uh, and uh, depends what other uh, parts of uh, body are involved. For example, uh, today, uh, on the, as I remember on the yeah. second slide, we, we could, you could see, uh, could you please uh, turn on the second slide? Uh, I don't know, may, maybe I'm right or wrong, but uh, I was consulted and uh, that is very rare case uh, of uh, the, um, uh, the invasion in uh, renal veins. You can see with the red, uh, with the red stripes, yes. But uh, this this type of this type of uh, uh, tumor is uh, is not very good. is is very malignant, and uh, some, it it may be, it may need uh, the chemotherapy. The chemotherapy but, while, while metastatic. There yes, with yeah. metastatic. But all this renal cell carcinoma uh, is not as angry as, for example, bladder cancer or something else. So it is always just uh, needed. Uh, uh, the, um, it, it is needed uh, pa partial nephrectomy. It, it requires. It, 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 it requires. It, it, it requires. Yeah, but we've got we've got an expert by yeah, now. Yeah. Probably does does the discussion make any sense? Uh, can you make a comment to explain thing about the question about chemotherapy and its effectiveness? Chemotherapy, like I said, that uh, we should use uh, CT of chest to mm -hmm. All right, all right. And in this case, chemotherapy would be indicated. You want to say, or oh, no? No. No. So, so in, the, in this case, Sasha was right. Yes, yeah. saying that chemotherapy is not yeah, indicated in this. Mm -hmm. And Robson, uh, don't, uh, do you use only Robson uh, uh, staging? Uh, as actually, as I know, that it's more popular among radiologists. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. More commonly used. Yeah. Popular doesn't doesn't suit the because context. Was, uh, More commonly used. Uh -huh. All urologists uh, had to use uh, PAD1. Have you heard? Not really. See, see. Uh, they, uh, so, it, it, but uh, always they are not very used uh, with urologists because uh, they just need uh, the picture of where mm -hmm. the um, where the tumor is located and just need to understand what access they need and uh, how they should get to mm -hmm. uh, uh, to kidney and to find out where are the arteries, uh, renal arteries and some additional arteries. Typically surgical approach. Yes, typically. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right, what about other questions, yes. people? I'm sure so they Let me see more. some words also right. about therapy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So the resection is, uh, not a resection, but radical nephrectomy is the method of choice, but there are really lots of uh, different surgical methods such as uh, Creolization and resection and uh, etc. So uh, yeah, it's yeah, not the only way. Depending on, on this yeah, particular yeah, patient. Depending on the stage. Actually, depending on the stage, because the stage uh, is the main factor that we look at uh, during the plan of a therapy. Stage when when, when uh, planning. Yes, the patient, how. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Let me make a comment about chemotherapy. Right. I know that uh, there is no chemotherapy approved uh, for the treatment of uh, renal cell carcinoma, but when it's uh, advanced stage of uh, carcinoma, uh, doctors use uh, another kind of uh, therapy. It's called targeted therapy. Mm -hmm. it's a so it's not chemotherapy, but it's. Uh, it's drugs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. It, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Please uh, get involved Some in the discussion. Words? Alina yeah. it feels boring. Maybe it will be no, 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 she, no, she, no. She's, she's enthusiastic. Yeah. She, she, <laughs> wants, she wants some questions, maybe, please. <laughs> yes. Questions or comments? Because the discussion mm -hmm. seems to be very interesting and just to the point. Right? Anything else to ask? Maybe you have questions? Me? Yeah. <laughs> no, I've got, so, yes, I've got one, by the way. Oh, okay. So you mentioned some statistics dealing with the situation in the United States. Yeah. So I was going to ask about, what about the statistics in Russia, concerning the situation in Russia? I think that Alexander Kovic would come in it better because he's a urologist. Uh, well, well, not a urologist, just a student, but uh, the question would be, be, would yeah, be. Would be. <laughs> You mean the statistics of what of uh, morbidity? Uh, so, w w was it the first? Uh, was it the first slide or no. which slide was it? Do you remember you mentioned the statistics? Mm -hmm. It was no, no, no. The, the first one. I think it was the second, second one. Second yeah. slide of statistics. Yeah, over there. So, uh, 
30,000 new cases are diagnosed annually in the United States. So what about the situation in Russia? Uh, well, uh, actually, I won't answer this question properly because... Uh, Nobody can answer about the situation yes, uh, in we, Russia. We, we need some more urologists, maybe, for here, but uh, only... only but very rarely you can find this kind of data in medical journals. Which, 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 is, which makes it difficult to compare. An interesting thing for a professional, I think, is to compare the situation, well, yes, in this country and in other countries. Well, but I still have a question, yeah. maybe to expert, but, uh, uh, but is, is it really the invasion to renal veins, or it's, uh, how you think? It's, it's uh, this, uh, with the, these red spikes, this is renal veins? Yes. So what, what, did it, what did they do with this patient? <laughs> it's, 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 it's a quotation, I think, yes? Uh, yeah, it's a quotation. From it's someone, it's someone. Mm -hmm. But anyway, anyway, a lot of important, a lot of very interesting facts, yes? About the pathology and the therapeutic strategies. So anything else to ask people? Or to uh, is there anything to, uh, information, any information about Uh, Does it make sense? As I know, in the urology department of our university, they always do a 3D modelizing of all the tumors, uh, just to modeling, model modeling, modeling, three, yeah, three modeling. Uh, just to plan the surgery, mm -hmm. because uh, it's really easier to uh, make the surgery after you have the 3D model. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, I, see, I think there are much people here, but they don't say uh, about oncomarkers and something else. A lot of people, I think, interested in this. Don't you want to ask some questions? Do we have people interested in oncology? Yes. And diagnosis? Definitely based on your question. It was clear. <laughs> that was evident. Uh, anybody else? Uh -huh. would you, uh, oh, we've got you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm sort of interested in statistics, I guess. Um, one of your slides gave the information as to uh, the life expectancy of different patients. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like being on the different stages yeah. of, of the disease. Um, did I get it right that life expectancy never exceeds five years, even in the lightest case? Of no, 